Well, hello, welcome to Ava Chow's Advanced Google Classroom Tutorial. And this is the first video, so we're gonna look at creating and sharing templates, um, where we can create templates in our entire Google Drive. Um, what are some collaborative offerings so that we can an, assign group work to students? And also in on the back end of Google Classroom, whenever you do create documents or when students turn it in, where do they end up in your drive and where can we find the templates folder? Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. I already have the second tab of the Google Classroom clicked on. Most commonly, if you are in Classroom, you can create it there under when you are creating an assignment, you can add in your digital resources here, or you can create your own. I'm gonna go ahead and already populated and added in one of my own files and then created um, a Google presentation and created a Google spreadsheet, a drawing and a form. And each time that I created these, it populates and pops up a default template, empty template of each of those. Um, I'll show you guys later on where it's being hidden. Let me go ahead and quickly show you guys the numerous places that you can find and create these lovely templates. If you happen to be in your Gmail account and you wanna make a Google Doc, go to the main menu, you have your drive, your docs, your sheets, and your slides. These are the three most common, that's why it's here. Um, later on, you can find forms in here. Um, you can go directly to Google Classroom. There should be a drawing. Now, if you don't like the order of these, you can click on it and see how it highlights slightly blue and move it around. You know, for all these years, I never bothered, but if you want, make your own. Um, if you go into Drive itself, obviously you can hit Drive the plus sign, you can do all these documents. I do have to warn you, wherever you are in your drive and you want to make a new document or new app, whatever folder you are in your Google Drive, that is where it's going to save it. So I'm in my drive, my professional development folder, my ed tech and my distant learning. So I'm gonna show you guys how it's actually done. So you notice here, there is no Google drawing. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a Google drawing just to show you guys. It puts in that document. Now, in order for this Google drawing to show up, it's not showing up. Hmm, that's because I don't got nothing for them to save. So you have to actually put in something for them to save. So we're gonna do a demo drawing. We are going to draw an arrow. And voila, we'll go here and bam, and add in that demo drawing assignment. So what if you're used to uh, creating all assignments and you can't find them? Go search for it, eventually you'll find it, and then one day you will organize your folder. Maybe you won't, depends on how you wanna do it. Okay, the other way is if you're in a Google Doc, you wanna create another assignment, go to File, New. If you go to Document and you say From Template, yes. There are templates out there that are created by Google. And you can use them if you want, but you can explore on your own. If you were to click on from template, just for an example, you can go to the template gallery. These are galleries on um, our servers for East Side, and there's categories. Um, there's also general templates that are available. Ooh, lots to explore. But this is just the docs, can you imagine? inside Google Slides, there's templates too, and all the other options, lovely. Same area for Google Spreadsheets, same area. Now, not the same area for Forms. So what you have to do is click on Forms Home. Wow, you got your blank, your quiz, and you got your template gallery here that you can look at going back here. If you want to look at the other things that you want to do, you also can go there. So those are our options. Let's go back to our assignment and move on and transition to collaborative options. Now these are only available for the G Suite documents of the f all of these um, that you can see. 
Now with forms, if the students, I'll show you guys that in a minute. Um, we'll go ahead and start with default. Students can view the file. That means whoever you're sharing the classes with automatically, all the students can view the file as if it's like a resource. So for example, um, this document on distant learning, this is, I can't edit it. I can request it, but it's for view, but heck, I can make my own copy here and so can the students. So if they're in a group, um, you, they can self-select as a leader or someone, or you can select them as a leader to be the leader, to make a copy. And once they make a copy, the students will have editing abilities and then they can go to share and add in the um, email addresses uh, to, now this is a little bit more restrictive. Let's go ahead. Um, they can add in the email addresses of their peers. I'll go back to this assignment. Um, the second option is students can edit the file. This would be like a crowdsourcing document where all the students can contribute, including yourself, to the file. And the third option is to make a copy for each student. That means literally every student will get a copy of your template. Um, back in the day, before they did this, there was another program called Doctopus, and that way, that program allows you to take a template and make it a file. And uh, I got in a habit of naming my templates templates. So you can start doing that for yourself, naming as templates. But when they do do that, it will put the student's name dash and untitled spreadsheet, whatever the title is. And then same thing if they're working in groups, they can self-select or you can select whoever the leader is. Um, they will take their template and add on the collaborators. Now it's very important to know whoever is the one that's designated owner of the template to turn in that app into Google Classroom, that person's gonna be responsible to turn in the work for them and the other people in the group. And usually to help me keep track and remind me, I have the students make a comment in their assignments who are in a group saying, hey, I, I am in a group with these people and this person X is going to turn an assignment. And that, that holds accountability for the students within with each other. Okay, so now those are the three options. For Google Form, there are ways of collaborating. So I'm gonna go ahead and go uh, go back to the form itself. In the one of the menus here, you can add on collaborators. So when you click on that, it's your typical sharing menu here um, that the students can add in. So it's just a different way that they can collaborate. So when you put in an assignment, um, the students uh, will be able to look at it, but they won't be able to edit it unless you add them as a collaborator. But of course they can always make a copy of it and then um, add on their collaborators that way. So we're moving on to seeing what the back end is. So if you create all this stuff and the students are turning in, where can you find these materials inside your Google Drive? And this is where we're gonna nerd out a little bit. I'm gonna go to my Google Drive. This is what my typical Google Drive uh, looks like. Yes, there's a lot of stuff, but with everybody, no matter how big your Google Drive is and how much stuff you have it, you will always have a folder saying classroom on it that's produced by Google Classroom. No, you didn't put it there, that's okay. It was Google Classroom that created that for you once you opened a Google Classroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this. And this is also what happens with students. All their stuff is inside the folder called Classroom. Uh, yes, there's lots of classes and this is the reason why I've made it a habit to call my classrooms with the years on it so I can know which years. This doesn't mean like this is all the years I've done. I've changed my nomenclature. So Google Classroom or Google Drive arranges your folders by default in numerical order before they get to the ABCs. Yeah, so let's go ahead and go into one of my uh, current classrooms and I'll show you. There, These are all the assignments so far I've had in my Google Classroom. Um, in the Google Drive, they're arranged in alphabetical order and these are actual titles of the assignments. 
One of my first assignments here was Significant Summer. When I did this, every single student had a copy of the journal write template. And so what I did call, um, when I shared it, it will put in the student's legal name, what they have, and then put a dash in the name of the assignment. Each student can put that in. Um, when you do, none of the students turn in any additional, but if they were to turn in any additional extraneous documents that you didn't assign them, but they turn it into this particular assignment, this is the folder where you can find it. Um, this extra thing in terms of editing is one of the grading features. You can save um, how you grade as a PDF. And this tends to happen if you're in a um, Google, um, on an iPad. So anyways, how do you find your templates? Go back to the main classroom. If you keep scrolling down, when you do create templates, and I said um, for significant summer, I created a copy for you soon. They will create a folder saying templates, do not edit. They will do you the favor, and if you did lose the templates, um, put in the word template and then put in significant summer. So here I can tell there are one, two, three, uh, f uh, four assignments uh, or four documents in which I have made make a copy for each student for this uh, particular class. All right, so that's it for showing templates. Hopefully that was helpful.